One. What do people in China do in their retirement years? A lot of them, especially if they don't have money, don't do a whole lot, and this is a problem here in China. Some of them take care of their grandchildren, and this takes up their time. In the warmer weather, you will see them outside playing mahjong and Chinese chess. Two. How have the lives of senior citizens in China changed in recent years? Things are not as hard for the elderly people in China now. They have it easier because their children have pretty good jobs, and so they're taken care of well. They can go to more places and can even drive around with their adult children, something they couldn't do in the past. Three. Would you like to live with the elderly? I would really love to live with the elderly. They have so much experience and so many stories to tell. You can really learn a lot from them. Of course, you have to be careful around them too, so as not to upset them or cause problems for them. Four. What changes do you think will take place in the future regarding seniors' lives in China? If China continues to make the kind of progress that it is making, then the seniors' lives will change very much. When you are richer and have money, you can do so many more things. You will see that old people will live longer and have better lives. Of course, in the rural regions and mountainous areas, seniors' lives haven't changed that much and probably won't. Five. Who do you think should take responsibility for looking after the elderly? Should they live with their children, or is it better for them to live in nursing homes? Of course, children should assume responsibility for their parents. But if the parents' health is pretty bad and their children don't have the time to look after them, then they would have to find someone to look after them. Here in China, the parents live for their children, so it is expected that the children. Will live for their parents. Six. How do you think modern technology has affected senior citizens in China today? Seniors are not so much affected by modern technology, other than maybe some forms of transportation. If you mean the internet or computers, I think that most seniors are not that concerned about them. Older values and going at a slower pace are more important to them than fancy gadgets. Old and young. Seven. What are some of the differences in attitude towards life between young and old people in China? Young people want to see and experience all that they can. Old people are more content to just enjoy the simpler things of life, like getting together with their folks or helping with the childcare. Young people want to travel abroad and make a lot of money and buy a lot of things. Old people are just thinking about the day and what they will do that day, even if it's not so glamorous. Eight. What are some of the main problems facing the elderly in China today? Well, in the city, the elderly are not facing the problems that the ones in the country are. Healthcare is a big issue with all of the sickness that is so prevalent in today's society. Retirement is difficult because the small pensions that the old people get here can hardly sustain them. People here in China have to retire early, so there is the feeling of worthlessness that they have to face. There are some big problems facing the elderly here in China. Nine. Do the elderly in China have a lot of influence on their children's and grandchildren's lives? Oh yes, absolutely. The elderly have a lot of influence in their families' lives. You see, here in China, the family unit is very important and always has been. Our culture, as you know, goes back many years, and parents and grandparents have played an important role in this unit. Respect for fathers and mothers, grandfathers and grandmothers, is instilled in each generation. Ten. What role do the elderly play in the family? Well, old people play the role of babysitter for their grandchildren. Another role that they play is moral supporter for the family. They have to cheer for the parents when they get a good job, cheer for the child when he does good in school, 
and cheer for the family when they make progress together. They also have to be the family counsellors to listen to and give advice to younger members of the family. 11. It seems that grandparents love their grandchildren more than their own sons and daughters. Why do you think that is? I don't think grandparents love the grandchildren more. They just have more time to play with them, more patience in guiding them, and they don't feel the responsibility for the total well-being of the child 24-7. Plus, seeing the children of their children brings back memories of their younger years. I think it's a great thing. Grandparents give children something special, special memories to cherish and grow up with. I think that grandparents love their grandchildren so much because of how much they also love their children. Children, Education and Play 1. How do you think children benefit from playing with toys? I think it's very important that children have toys to play with to help stimulate a good imagination. Of course, it's very important to give them the right toys. Toy weapons can have an adverse effect on children and might encourage them to be more violent when they grow older. Different toys can help their coordination, abilities, artistic skills, and even inspire them musically. I believe that toys can be very beneficial for children if presented in the correct way and supervised well. 2. What do you think about children playing electronic games? Electronic games have become a must-have for many of today's children. The games can be very exciting and are highly entertaining. Unfortunately, if children spend most of their time sitting in front of a computer or TV playing games, then they rarely develop good communication skills or learn how to interact with others in real life. I enjoyed playing computer games when I was young, but if there's not a good balance, then it's not good. If I had a child, I would allow him a specific amount of time to play computer games and encourage him, her, to spend more time outdoors playing sports with other people his age. That way he will have good health and also learn how to communicate and interact with his peers. 3. What do you think are the differences between homeschooling and studying in school? I think there is a very big difference. Homeschooling is more personalised and focused on the individual student's needs, whereas personal attention is not available in public schools due to there being many other students. Studying at home gives the student freedom to go faster in those subjects that he enjoys and to learn more about topics that interest him. Also, studying at home provides the opportunity to get more practical knowledge and experience that you cannot get from school. 4. Why do you think learning theoretical material is emphasised more than learning practical skills? Learning theoretical material can help you to develop practical skills. I personally feel that there needs to be a balance between theoretical material, or, in other words, knowledge from textbooks, and having hands-on experience and developing more practical skills. Both are needed and both are important. Right now the education system is geared to passing exams, so theoretical material is emphasised and taught in classes to help the students get high marks on their exams. Unfortunately, most of this information is not very useful in finding a good job. 5. Do you think the education system in China should be reformed? Yes, I do think that changes need to happen. The focus of today's education system is on passing exams, but when students graduate from high school or university, they find that the knowledge they gained in school cannot help them get a good job. I suggest that the courses and subjects studied in school be practical as well as informative. Personally speaking, experience is the best teacher. 
and I think that if the students can get hands-on experience in addition to studying from textbooks, it will give them a more well-rounded education. Children and families, six. Who usually disciplines children in Chinese families? The mother or the father? It all depends on the family. Often, it's the father figure who gives the most discipline to the child. However, fathers now are busier with their careers and are often not at home, so the mother is left with the job of disciplining their child. Every child needs good, healthy discipline in order to have a good character. Fathers have this job by nature, though I think it's important that the mother and father work together to have a united discipline standard for their child, so that he she can feel loved and protected. Seven, do you think it's a good idea for children to aim to be a professional athlete? No, I think it's a waste of a person's energy and talents. But so long as athletics is promoted by the media. Children will want to be sports stars. It's not a bad job compared to many, but most who try it will not succeed. It takes a special kind of person to succeed in athletics. <music> Celebrities in your country. One. What kind of people become famous these days? It's mostly musicians, singers, actors, and actresses, and athletes who become famous. That's because their careers are all about being seen by many people. They wouldn't have a job if no one watched. So if they do what they do well, they will be famous automatically. Politicians are also famous, but only the ones in top positions or the ones who interact a lot with the press. Two. Is this different from the kind of achievement that made people famous in the past? In what way? When compared to the recent past, not really. Sports and the performing arts have always been the more public professions, but I think in times past there were more political and military leaders who were famous in China. I think what has mostly changed is that more people have access to mass media, so fame has become a more cultural interest. Three, how do you think people will become famous in the future? Probably in the same ways they do today. As long as there is mass media, athletes and performers will become famous. Politicians will also always be famous because power is something people pay attention to. But maybe the most important people will still be the least known. Being in the public eye, four. What are the good things about being famous? Are there any disadvantages? Being famous can be useful. You can use it to do good or for personal gain. But I think the disadvantages outweigh the advantages. You can never go anywhere in public without having crowds of people follow you, and you will always have cameras in your face. Whatever personal things happen in your life will often become common knowledge to everyone, and being famous isolates you from the real world. So that you can't see what's really going on in people's lives. Five. How do the media in your country treat celebrities? I think it's similar to most places. If someone becomes famous enough, they become a national hero, at least until they do something that offends people. If they do something that is not patriotic, they will quickly lose their popularity. I think it's the same as most places. Six. Why do you think ordinary people are interested in the lives of celebrities? I think it's because they are bored and feel unhappy and unsatisfied with their own lives. They try to comfort themselves by paying attention to things that happen to celebrities, especially the bad things. Then they can think about something other than their own problems and things they don't like. Seven. Do you think celebrities should appear in advertisements? I don't think so, but I don't think there's anything that can be done to change it. Companies want their products to become famous, so they pay famous people to support it or become associated with it. It's simple psychology. 
I don't think it's honest, but I also don't think it will change. 8. Some professional athletes are very well paid. Do you think they deserve to be so well paid? No. Sports are just games, nothing special. I think it's really quite pathetic, actually, but at least they are not doing something harmful in being paid for it, like being a gangster or a smuggler. I don't think they deserve it, but most people who are paid well don't deserve it either. That's life. Challenging Activities 1. Are adventurous activities popular in China? Yes. As more and more people in China are looking for new and different ways to spend their free time, the Chinese youth wish to challenge themselves, which often leads them to extreme sports like snowboarding, rollerblading, rock climbing, and trick BMX. The problem they face is that adventurous activities and extreme sports are not always available, or if they are, they're too expensive for the average Chinese to participate. If more facilities and opportunities were available, then I believe these activities would grow in popularity. 2. Why do you think people like adventurous activities? I think it's for the rush and excitement that comes from challenging yourself and pushing yourself to the limits. Our lives are set in a routine of work or study. Going on an adventure or doing an activity requires risks, tests our strength and capabilities, and gives us a thrill and feeling of triumph as we conquer nature, conquer our fears, and realize our own strength. 3. What do you think are the advantages and possible disadvantages of experiential training. The advantages and disadvantages all depend on the individual. Two people may do the same thing but come away from it with different views on the experience. Some of the advantages are greater self confidence, more awareness of your capabilities and limits, and greater physical dexterity. On the other hand, if you don't take proper precautions, you can have serious accidents or cause someone to get hurt. Some people can be overly confident and take too great of a risk, which can end tragically. Children's Development Challenges 4. How do you think parents could bring up their children to be more independent? Parents should give children more opportunities to make mistakes. If children are too sheltered, protected or pampered, then they will not have the chance to be independent. Parents need to encourage their children to be responsible. If a parent does not give children the opportunity to do things themselves, even if they can't do them very well, then they will never learn. Everyone has to start somewhere, and we're not born knowing how to take care of ourselves. This information should be taught to children in an environment where it's okay to make mistakes, and which encourages children to learn from them and to try new things. 5. Do children have more freedom today to do what they want than before? That's hard to say. In general, I would say, yes, they do. However, in certain areas, such as education and deciding their career, I think it's the same. Children today have more things than before, and definitely more opportunities to experience things that were not available in the past. So in a way, yes, they do have more freedom. But I think that proper education on how to wisely use that freedom is sadly missing. Children have more freedom, but are not responsible, so they often misuse it. 6. Do children today face more challenges than before? In a way, yes, they do. Today's society is more demanding, and the pressure is greater than ever. Every parent wants their child to be the best, and often they push their child too hard. Children today do not have time to be a child, but instead have the challenge, difficulty, and pressure of getting high grades, having to go to many classes, and getting into good schools. 
the challenges children face and experience today are very different from the past, but it's hard for me personally to say if they are greater than before. Being a leader. One. Would you like to be a leader? I would like to because I know that being a leader requires something great of people. Being a leader will help to bring out the best in someone, and I want my best qualities to be apparent in my life. I wish to have children some day, and I know that raising children will require the best leadership. Also, my parents expect me to get a good job, and a high position means having many others working under your authority. I believe this world needs more leaders and a higher standard of leadership. Two. Why don't some people want to be leaders? The answer to this question has become very clear to me recently, as I must deal with it every day. To be a good leader, one must be a good follower, and there are very few people who can and wish to follow. It is very hard to take orders from others when you are excited about your future, and when you have many personal dreams. But we have to learn from others to be able to lead them, and that is the hardest part to learn. Three, why do we need leaders? We need leaders because without them, life would be chaos. I know when I was a child, if my mother did not teach me lessons, I would have caused many terrible problems. Many people are ignorant when they are young, but many are just as ignorant when they are older. We can see when a society is lacking in leadership, how quickly it falls. Being a good leader is a priceless quality. Leadership qualities. Four. What are the qualities of a leader? Or, what abilities are needed to be a leader? I would say a leader needs a lot of dedication and passion for what he is doing. He must be able to convey this in his work. He needs patience to handle people. This leader must also understand those he leads, and like I said above, he must understand what it is like to follow. A leader should be a good example of what he is trying to teach, and should follow his own advice. Five, is it possible to be a good speaker in front of others, and to be a good leader, but at the same time not be a good person at the personal level? Yes, of course. Every day I watch a little TV, and sometimes when I have free time, I will watch movies. Every person that I see on TV knows what he is doing and acts his part, but maybe inside he is not at all the character I see him as. My boss at work may lead me and my workmates and treat us well, but does he treat his family well? Do I know for sure that he treats people on the street well? No, I do not know. Six. What are some differences between current leaders and leaders of the past? The leaders of the past are as varied as they are today, but I think before there was more to being a leader. A long time ago, people could not treat each other badly without suffering themselves or being tried by the law. But these days, I often see very bad occurrences between bosses and their workers, or even governments and their people. In many ways, things should be done as they were before. Training future leaders. Seven. How do people become leaders? By perseverance and willpower, I think. I also believe that a person who wants to be a good leader must be focused but not stressed. He should know what he wants and give his all for it. But he should never stop caring for those around him, because who would want to follow someone who shows no interest in? Or appreciation of others, I certainly wouldn't. Eight. What can parents do to encourage the development of leadership abilities in their children? Be a good example. Try their best to understand and not order children around. Never spoil them, but reward them for hard work. The parents should never stop learning from their children. A child who feels ignored by his parents. Will never grow to full maturity. Nine, 
How do you think leaders of the future will be different to current leaders? I think they will grow less powerful. The more independence people have, the more they see their own potential, and the harder it will be for them to accept their leaders. Each person in China is pushed to succeed, to reach their full potential, and I think it will be very hard for them to live their life following rules and orders. I think many Chinese will realize that they could be anything.